So I promised to say a little bit about this geometric probability theory and I'm now coming to an area which is very useful for certain questions but is not so widely known in, in mainstream image processing. So there are you know, of course, specialized conferences and journals, etc. But the many people working on computer vision are not so familiar with this kind of result. Uh, much of the work relies on Hardwiger's theorem, which says that every additive motion invariant and convex continuous measure can be written just as a weighted sum of the Minkowski functionals. And these Minkowski functionals are in 2D. So if I have a binary image, the Minkowski in 2D, the Minkowski functionals are just the area of the foreground, the contour length, and the Euler characteristic. In 3D, similarly, it's uh, volume, surface area, Euler characteristic, and in addition, mean curvature. And if you go to 4D, there will be yet another uh, of these Minkowski functionals added. Um, this is the, the Euler characteristic is a topological descriptor. In 2D, it's essentially number of objects minus number of holes. So the Euler characteristic is what distinguishes a disk from a uh, from a circle, say. Yeah. So the one has a hole, the other has not, or or a donut from a pretzel because. Uh, the pretzel has more holes than the donut. So this is the most fundamental topological descriptor. Now this is the good news, Hardwiger's theorem, that every additive motion invariant and convex continuous measure can be written as just a weighted sum of, of these few uh, characteristics that I've mentioned here. The bad news is that not every interesting characteristic that you that you may want to extract is additive motion invariant and convex continuous. In other words, it is possible to simulate images that are identical according that have identical Minkowski functionals but look extremely different otherwise. So for example, to trick the Euler char characteristic, you can let's say, uh, make in your foreground object of interest a couple of big blatant holes that, you know, totally destroy your foreground object and then at the same time uh, add a number of single pixel foreground objects somewhere else and this will leave your Euler characteristic constant while having changed, of course, the shape. Now, the thing that I've just described, so to punch a few holes and add a few small objects, that would change the contour length, for example. But you can construct examples, so images which are identical according to all of the Minkowski functionals and yet look very, very different. So, summary, not all interesting features are additive motion variant and convex continuous, which is why in practice, even out of binary images, you will want to extract more than just these values. Now, I found very interesting that a linear computation time of these entities is possible. It seems obvious for area, um, maybe kind of obvious for contour length, but for Euler characteristic, I find it quite stunning. So if you think, you know, how would you compute the Euler char characteristic of an object? Um, I would perhaps use something like a union find algorithm so to find all the connected components of the foreground and all connected components of the background and then you know compute their difference that seems reasonable even if it's not strictly linear time um, but there's a different way namely using those local binary patterns so you partition your image into an overlapping set of let's say patches of size two by two and you then compute histograms so 
how often in your image does it happen, in your binary image, how often does it happen that all four adjacent pixels are zero? Or how often does it happen that all adjacent pixels are one? How many patches do you find in which just the top left or top right or bottom left or bottom right pixel is on and all others are zero and so on? Yeah? So you can look for how often these patterns appear and a very simple rule to compute the area of the foreground would for example be as follows we take the number so so these are defined only up to rotation so in other words q1 is the one that i've shown here but q1 would also be that one and there are two other versions still so a simple rule to compute the area which is sort of obvious would be to take uh, the number of patches which are of type 1 plus twice the number of patches which are of type 2 because they have two active pixels plus three times the number of patches of type 3 and so on and so on. Uh, there is a division by 4 at the end of this formula and the reason here is that uh, overlapping patches were used. Okay, So we need to account for the overlap. So that's, uh, I would say, an obvious formula. It's perhaps less obvious that this formula is actually biased, which has to do with, um, well, binarization artifacts. So if you have a continuous shape, like a circle, and if you discretize it on a, on a regular grid, then this will, re applying this formula, will result in a biased estimate of area. And same goes for contour length, which you can compute in a similar fashion. And there are actually formulas that are harder to derive, which are less biased. Now for the contour length, the formula is already a bit less obvious. So uh, Q0 does not enter in the formula for the contour length, because you know, it, if there is no object, it does not add to contour length, then uh, we can say, okay, we have a contour length of one that we're adding here, and or the same amount of contour length that we're adding there. Uh, we have twice the amount of contour length that we're adding uh, for these QD terms, and this is why we have a two here. And we have again one unit length of contour which are added in the Q3s. So this formula, yeah, sort of makes sense. Uh, it's trickier for the Euler characteristic and you can uh, derive different formulas based on the 4 or on the 8 neighborhood. Both are biased but in opposite directions so it's a good idea to take an average of these uh, two formula which however is unfortunately still biased. And um, well these formulas have been known since the 70s at last. Uh, at least I've taken them from this uh, thesis here of Jochen Schmeling. I, I just try to explain it for the, you know, for the, for the area, let's say. There is one active pixel in Q1, so it makes sense to increment my area count by one unit. There are two active pixels in Q2, so it makes sense to increase my count by two for each occurrence of this type of patch. There are three active pixels in Q3, so it makes sense to increment my area count by three for each Q3 patch that I find, and so on. Yeah. All right. Applications. Uh, interestingly, a major success domain for this is in cosmology. The reason being that you can compute these uh, characteristics, the Minkowski functionals or the Minkowski functions for a number of random models. And people test 
if the distribution, let's say, of microwave background radiation in our in our universe, if it corresponds to those random distributions. So in a way, you want to come up with a hypothesis test of whether the data that we find in our universe is compatible with a certain randomness or with a certain stochastic model. Uh, I've shown here a more mundane application, namely uh, Jochen Schmeling worked in uh, surface inspection and uh, shown here is on the top left an original height map of some sample, then in the middle a smooth version thereof, so uh, Jochen probably used uh, the median filter to get rid of some uh, artifacts in the height map. So if you look really closely, you know there are, for example, some streaking artifacts here. And those streaking artifacts, they are gone in the filtered version. And then on the right hand side is a model from stochastic geometry. So in this model here, um, sphere caps of random, I think sphere caps of uh, random size and uh, uh, height distribution were combined to to build this uh, this image here, and you know perceptually you would say that actually this is a good match, and on the bottom you see a plot for this for the model, and uh, the plot for the model is not something you computed by by averaging over 10 or 100 model images but by really computing it uh, this is pen and paper work yeah? so, so th actually there are three curves if you look uh, closely there is one this is the pen and paper curve then the dashed one is the one computed from the uh, simulated images and then in the middle is uh, in the middle is the the curve that was found for the for the pre-processed image shown in the middle. Now these curves show you these Minkowski measures, namely the area, the contour length, and the Euler characteristic, not for one level set but for all level sets. So we have from left to right the threshold at which a gray value image was thresholded to turn it into a binary image and then on the vertical axis we have the area or the contour length or the Euler characteristic. So if I choose a single threshold these values or these characteristics are called Minkowski functionals. If I'm considering a whole curve like this the result is called a Minkowski function. Normally, this is what you would have liked to call a functional, but you you know you cannot call it functional nil or so. So this is why it's called a Minkowski function. So this is something which in uh, which you these Minkowski functions are something that you can use to characterize surfaces, or you can use these to parametrize stochastic models. So let's say I'm given the input image on the left hand side and I want to find parameters for my simulation that will make the image appear as close as possible as measured by these Minkowski functionals then you can vary the parameters in your stochastic model so as to produce a, uh, a curve here that is as close as possible to the to the one that you measured empirically. So if you're interested in this entire field, again, um, the book by, uh, there's another book by Osa and Möglich uh, that's a good introduction to this entire field.